Welcome to the Two Disabled Dudes Podcast. We believe life is about how we react. Hey everybody, thanks for listening. I am Kyle. That is Sean. And um, Sean, we on this episode, we want to talk about our recent trip to South Dakota and all the stuff we experienced there. But first of all, you texted me and you have a few more things to say about Audible. Is that true? Yeah, I do I have several things I need to say. So thank you very much. I am going to add right now to my Audible review. Okay, so several episodes ago, in fact, I don't remember what number it was, but shoot, if we could figure that out real quick, that'd be awesome. <laughs> because everybody needs, I think, to hear my opinion of Audible. First of all, if you've heard the episode and you heard my original review, you know that I'm not a fan. And I am continued... To be not a fan, that's not the right wording, but you get the idea. Recently, I had a brand new experience with Audible. So, I randomly look at a particular credit card statement. This is a credit card I don't use very often. So, I don't always, you know, I admittedly, I don't pay attention to some things in my life. Uh, this particular credit card's one of them. So anyway, I just happened to be browsing through my bank statement or the credit card statement, and, and I just happened to be on like a day or two after Audible charged me its membership price. And I'm like, whoa, what is that? I, I'm not a member. So of course I'm ticked. I'm like, what the heck? So I called them. And I get somebody on the phone, which surprisingly was a lot easier than I expected. But I get a human on the phone and I proceed to let him know, like, hey, you're charging my credit card. I don't know how long you've been doing this, but I, what the heck? So, of course, she <laughs> does her research and she's like, oh, yeah, it looks like you signed up for a free trial. And at the end of that free trial the membership kicked in because you never canceled the trial. And I'm like, what? How For, like, how long? She goes, you know, I said something like, oh, what, like a year ago? Like, come on, you can you can look at my use, and you can see that I've never even opened the app, much less used it. So is there anything we can do to refund some of that money? Because I'm paying for something, A, I didn't know I was paying for, and B, I haven't been utilizing. So I'll just... Kind of tick. And she was like, oh, uh, no, it hasn't been a year. It's been since July of last year. I'm like, oh, <laughs> my bad. Nine months. I'm sorry. I was so far off. Um, so that was sort of annoying because they were just so exact. But anyway, I must say that my current disappointment in situation is completely my fault. I don't remember doing a free trial. But sure, I'll admit I probably did. And of course, I didn't pay attention to the end date. So fine, I agreed. It's my fault. I get it. But here's the deal. I never remember giving Audible my credit card. Like, I don't remember ever signing up and utilizing my credit card. If I did, I never would have used that particular credit card. That's not what that one's for. Like, I don't use it for monthly charges. So I say to her, I'm like, I don't, I don't remember ever giving you a credit card. Like, how in the world did this go about? Like, that's not the card I would have used. And she said, this is where I got really ticked. Mm -hmm. She said, well, we're an Amazon company. So any credit card you've oh. ever used with the Amazon, we can use for your oh own my subscription. Gosh. And I'm like, what the are you kidding me? Like, 
I'm sure that's probably in their fine print somewhere, which is how they're getting away with it. But how in the world is that even ethical? Right. Like that, oh, you use this once on Amazon, so we're just going to put it on the Audible for you. What? Exactly. And any other company Amazon owns, such as IMDb or whatever else they I don't even know what they own, but... They own like half the world, right. so now they have access to anything I've ever done on Amazon. That a doesn't seem okay to me, and b is not cool, uh, and c is not cool. So I just want to make sure everyone knows <laughs> Audible is not cool. And I'm going to be honest with you: the more and more I experience things like this, the less and less I'm liking Amazon. To be honest, yeah. like I'm starting to. Think twice about Amazon. And here's a, a concern. When I do stuff for work, I sometimes use my Amazon account, but I use a work-provided company credit card. Does that mean they now have access to that credit card to charge whenever I miss a payment of Audible or whatever? Maybe all my mm-hmm. personal credit cards are expired. Are they going to go dig up my work American Express? Yeah. That's that's not cool. Yikes! So, so anyway, Sh- Sean, I might have missed. To- I might have missed this detail. What was the total charge? That like nine you- months. Yeah. So uh, and I don't have a calculator. Like fifteen dollars a month or nine something. Nine times fourteen ninety five. Yeah. So quick math. What is that like? A uh, hundred. I don't know what <laughs> what it was. <laughs> More than a hundred. Yeah. The, I, I'm terrible at math. Uh, but here's the deal. So I called like originally arguing and wanted them to refund the monthly charges. And I didn't push really hard because I realized, okay, this is my overs- oversight, my fault. So what I found out I'm getting with the monthly charges is a credit towards buying books. So I currently have six points or six credits with Audible that I can use to buy six books. And since I have a goal to read 20 anyway, I said, you know what? I've already paid for it, so I will utilize those credits to get books. And what they've allowed me to do is freeze the account, quote-unquote, for three months. So I marked my calendar so I don't forget to cancel. But I've got three months to utilize those six credits. And then I will close the account or close the the subscription with Audible. And did you switch the credit cards? Well, I'm yeah, I'm gonna I I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do there, but Yeah. Okay. At the end on. of the day, I'm getting six bucks out of the deal, so I'm not <laughs> right. terribly frustrated, but right. I am pretty frustrated. Yeah, yeah. And I just thought y'all should know that. All right. Audible sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's move on. Uh Kyle, back to South Dakota. We both recently met in South Dakota, but you were there several days before me. Can you tell our listeners a bit about your visit and maybe what took you to South Dakota? Yeah, so I was there for this training called PPALS, uh, Professional Patient Advocates in Life Sciences, (laughs) PPALS. Yeah, P-Pals. yeah, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but um, it was re- it was really awesome. Um, so we met at Stanford Health. Stanford Research is where we met. In Stanford, is this? I'll, I'll tell you about PayPal's in a sec. But Stanford Research first is this cool place in the middle of nowhere right in in sioux <laughs> falls south dakota everybody that we met. <laughs> <laughs> no i don't i don't think that anyone it's, there is uh not is unaware that they're in the middle of nowhere <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair <laughs> we were in sioux falls and it is yeah. if i remember correctly the second largest city in south I dakota think I think that might be true. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. It was quite a metropolis. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, no, but Stanford is a really incredible place. They have a huge hospital system that covers South Dakota, North Dakota, and like Eastern Montana. 
and they have a coverage area that is the size of Texas. So they have uh, multiple hospitals all over that region. And uh, it was started by this guy named Denny Sanford. Actually, well, no, it wasn't started yeah. by him. Uh, but he he donated to this hospital system. He's donated almost a, a no, I think just over a billion dollars to the hospital system. Um, and he's a super generous and philanthropic guy. I think he made all his cash on uh, credit cards back in the day, and now he's giving it all back. So that's that's pretty awesome. Um, but so it's this huge hospital system and they have a research arm or research department and, um, they work with this organization called PayPal's, um, to do the patient advocacy training each year. And this is the fourth year. And I asked all around of people I know in, the you know with that I would see our conferences and stuff, different rare disease conferences, and they all knew about PayPal's and everybody raved about how great it was. And so I went this year and I learned a lot about patient advocacy and just the the process that everyone goes through in drug development. Um, so patient advocacy basically you can boil it down to. Um, Patient inclusion, like including the patient in every part of the drug development process. And, um, you know, why the heck do we develop drugs so that they can help a person eventually, right? And so that person should be involved in every aspect of the drug development because that's what the heck we're doing it for? Like, I think that kind of makes a lot of sense, but... You know, actually, when I think about it, the correlation that comes to my mind is, you know, maybe you or I can't relate, but for those folks out there that are married, like, you wouldn't just make a decision, <laughs> a big decision, like, let's sell the house tomorrow or put it on the market with without... Talking to your spouse, right, or you know, right, or whatever the big decision might be, what, how to raise your kids, or how to discipline, or whatever. It would be foolish for you to make such a decision without dialoguing and involving the other half of the marriage. So I think right. about it that That's way. It's exactly like exactly it. It's like a, a a pharma or whatever the pro- side of the process may be saying, okay, this. This right here, this is the ticket. This is going to work for every patient ever. Like, without any data, without any research, without any kind of consideration of how it affects a person or their symptoms or whatever. So, anyway, yeah, I like the way you, you say inclusion, but I think even just a more simple word would just be involving. Like, just yep, get somebody to weigh yeah. in on it. And, of course, for those patients that are willing to be involved... It makes all the difference, but anyway, back to where you right. back to where no, you were. Like, uh, you know, uh, a company spends five hundred million dollars developing a drug, and then all of a sudden they have this drug, but they didn't. They forgot to ask the person <laughs> who was going to take it. Like, is this going to be meaningful for you? Sure. <laughs> you know, and or are you? That's, can you swallow this big old pill, or can you inject it yourself, or whatever? Yeah. Right. And, you know, obviously that's a, a sensitive thing um, to include patients in the process of making a drug that people are going to um, sell that's going to benefit them. Like, there's all kinds of conflict of interest and, and sensitivity just so nobody gets taken advantage of and stuff. And so that's what a patient advocate in a patient advocacy department at say a pharma company it deals with is just making sure to work directly with a patient a patient advocacy organization like like Fera or whatever it is MDA or Cystic Fibrosis Foundation 
um, and work with them to make sure their pa- their patients are being heard during the process. So um, that's generally what I was learning about. And I met some really amazing people that developed this program. And, um, you know, all the students in the program were really awesome, too, people that we're working with um, to on some FA stuff too, um, so that was cool to just connect with everybody in the industry. I think too, besides the connection, you know, you talked about the patient advocate being somebody that helps connect patients to the cause or to the research. I think it also provides uh, a more in-depth connection. Because, you know, maybe the researcher or the doctor can't always be a phone call away. But most patient advocates are just a phone call away or an email or a text. And they're really easy to talk to. And I know for for me, somebody that's not smart when it comes to the science behind a lot of (laughs) what goes on in our space... I appreciate the the advocacy organization or the individual who can maybe break it down in layman's terms or make it easier for me to understand what's going on in the lab across town or wherever. Does that, does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, you know, that's a good point. That's like, a, there's a lot of value in that. Yeah, and I think that's a big one of the big roles of a patient advocate, like you said, is making the science and everything, the whole process accessible by breaking it down like that, like you say. So, yeah, I like that. So, Sean, that's how I spent my week. Um, three of the days, you showed up on Thursday. Yeah. And uh, what what did you experience when you got there? So, for me, I had the privilege of being a part of the second half of their week's events. They do a rare Great Plains Rare Disease Summit, and they bring in a you know different patient groups or patient individuals and um, people involved in that space. But to kick off the summit, they this year they did a film screening as sort of the kickoff event and welcome, whatever you might want to call it. So I got yeah. there to be a part of them screening our film, The Ataxian. And of yeah. course, after they showed that, we did a brief Q&A uh, between you and I, all things related to FA or the film. And then we were also joined by a few other individuals, a father of an fa who is also a strong fundraiser, and then two doctors and scientists in the space of either fa or Sanford specifically. Yeah. So that was kind of the the big part that I I guess I played, and then of of course we got to hang out for a couple of days and got to meet several FAers I've never met before. One of the guys um, were were connected on Facebook, so as soon as he told me his name, I was like, oh. I, I totally know you. We just haven't ever hung out or met in person. So it was cool meeting um, him and his family and, and just being around them for a couple of days and several other people like Seth that we've talked about uh, either on social media, another advocate that we got connected with several months ago, different advocates yeah, I, in this space that we got to, I finally got to shake hands with. I I learned that Seth's name is not Seth Rothberg. It's Seth Rothberg. Yeah. There's no H in there. No so, H. um, but yeah, we need to have him on the show sometime soon. Yeah, a really cool guy with a great story. So we're gonna we're gonna bug him for an interview. But there were yeah, it w- there were a couple specific um, interactions that I thought it might be kind of cool to talk about. Do you? Do you have any, or is it is this me? Because I, I do have yeah, a couple no, that are I, on my mind. I mean, I think we're we're thinking of the same thing, so go ahead. So the first one I'm thinking of is at the film, you know, it's over. They open it up for a Q&A. So one young lady, actually 18, 
she raises her hand and I forget her first question, but basically her second question was, um, how do I train? Because I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to do that too. Like that's on my bucket list now. And of course she's talking about riding her bicycle across country and race across America. And of course that was a good laugh and it was a lighthearted moment. But I'm also pretty sure she was dead serious. I think you're right, yeah. So I think she's got her her brain turning on something big, something crazy. Whether it's Race Across America, maybe she follows through. But even if it's not that, I, I'm i pretty confident this, this little um, beast of a girl is on track to <laughs> yeah. to get something done. And I thought that was cool because... You know, obviously, we all hope to be somewhat inspiring or impactful or impacting. And it was obvious that she felt inspired by that film. And, and that's always uh, resonating with me. So Yeah, yeah. I think it's super validating um, to sort of pass the baton in a way, right? Like, Sean, how, how old are you now? Yeah. Exactly. So uh, she's only eighteen, and she's going to be the next one to take to take the baton forward for the FA community, totally. right? Totally. Um, all right, we're we're not quite out of the game yet, but <laughs> but it's cool to see someone be inspired by what we do, um, and you know, commit to doing what she can for the community and. Uh, you know, th- that's happened to us, I think, too. There's been several people, obviously, before us sure. that have inspired us to do what we can okay. for the community. And it's just cool to kind of perpetuate that process. For sure. You know, I think part of what makes me nervous is I'm afraid her and her family are thinking, okay, it's a relay. So we've already got three people, right? <laughs> we just seen one more. Because somebody asked, would you guys do it again? And I'm afraid they're yeah. gonna reach out to us in a few months. Like, hey, we're going for it. You, you guys are with us, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, um, I get back to me later. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, anyway, the the other one that I had in my mind, Kyle. I think you may have crossed paths with her more often than me, but I do want to set this up. We had the privilege of being a part or featured in a local news spotlight. A couple um, local news crew members came out and they did an actual, like a little three minute documentary, if you will, a little snippet. And it played on the, I think, six o'clock news that night. Well, the very next morning, I slept in. You went ahead to the conference. I got a late start. I'm sitting in the hotel breakfast area, and I'm all by myself, minding my own business, just eating breakfast. <laughs> and this uh, employee, the hotel s- staffer, came over, and she puts a box of donuts down on the table, and what? she looks at me, and she was like, Sean, would you like a donut? And I'm like... Uh, how do, how do, what? How do you know my name? Um, so that's how I met Don. That was our first interaction. Wow. And of course, it took a few seconds, but then, you know, I began to realize, oh, she, she must have seen, like, there was no other reason or way she would have known who I was, right? Right. So then right. she began to say, you know, she was laughing. She was like, oh, I saw you and Kyle on the news last night. She even knew your name. And she was like, I saw Kyle a couple hours ago. And anyway, um, it. Yeah, well, I mean, partly I had seen her for like four days. Yeah, good point. She was there every day that week. So I, and everyone else there. Like people that have been going to that to the PayPal's training for f- three, four years, they see her every single year. Oh, wow. So they even knew her before <laughs> I even got there. Right. So, <laughs> so I th- that's a huge testament just in her personality. The fact that she 
you know, is a warm enough individual for you or anybody to remember a year or two later? That's right, she's definitely right. a warm hearted individual. And what was cool about meeting Donna is she gave us she gave each of us a little pin to put it on our shirt collars or whatever. And it's a guardian angel. And it's a little gold pendant. It came with a little poem, if you will, explaining what this guardian angel means and what it does. And it was just really sweet of her to just essentially say thank you and God bless you. Like, keep up the good work. Yeah. And that yeah. was touching for yeah, sure. Yeah, she's super cool. I So... The first day I got there, um, I went down to breakfast, and she comes right up to me and goes, hey, what what do you want for breakfast? And she, like, gets all the stuff for me, because, like, it's not that easy to, you know, get a thing of yogurt and an apple and whatever else, a cup of coffee, and bring it to the table. So she got all that stuff for me, and then the next day... She remembered exactly what I got and oh, just wow. like started getting that stuff right when she saw me That's and like amazing. I don't know she was really really cool and anticipating my needs and like re- you could tell she really enjoyed you know, serving other people and I found out later that um, after work after the hotel every day she goes and helps out uh, this older woman mm. um do stuff around her house and that's what she does wow. she serves people for 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 a living so and you you can tell for her it's not just a job it's not just employment right. like to her i would assume this is a bit of a calling a purpose like her contribution to the world is to give amazing friendly service whether it's in the context of my job or not like Right. Perfect. Yep. Perfect individual for any hotel, any restaurant, any service oriented business. So um kudos to the Clubhouse Hotel for having such an incredible associate on their team. Yep. And Don, if you're listening, thank you so much and um hopefully we will see you again. Yeah. So yeah, what I feel like we had a great trip overall. I was pretty tired. It was a short trip for me. But the folks that I got to meet and the experiences I got to share in with others was a lot of fun and really uh, refreshing in a sense. So definitely a good trip. And, and I would encourage you, I guess, take this opportunity to remind our listeners how important patient involvement is. So... I would encourage you to find, whether it's FA or something else, find a network or even just a few other friends on Facebook and to begin the process of building um, your own little tribe, if you will, and getting connected to others and especially organizations connected to your condition or your challenge and be a part of the process to overcome to defeat to find a cure whatever it may be yep that's how it happens um our strength is in numbers even though absolutely it might feel like we're by ourselves you know when we find each other that's where our strength comes from so i agree yeah awesome sean well thanks for the conversation and South Dakota, thank you for having us for a week. It was fun, and um, we hope to see you again soon. Thank you for listening to the Two Disabled Dudes podcast. Find us online at twodisabledudes.com, and please subscribe on the iTunes. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And special thanks to our audio producer, Jake Tompkins. Until next time. Keep living with the urgency.